some man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Let's raise our voices and worship God. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Somebody just tell God today, I believe that there is something for me. There is something for me. There must be an answer for me. There must be a solution for me. There must be a miracle for me. There must be a solution for me. I break through today. I transcend today. I elevate today. I evolve today. I advance today. I progress today. Thank you, Lord. Ma shere de brade go sitele hu sika para ragato re riko shante ke prade gato ro brodo go zele ke shere de de boko shere de de boko rara na bago shere de ma. E shere de brodo go sira rara 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 de boko sitele de de ma. Raise our voice and let's sing it all.
can never repay the debt of love I owe. You, Lord, I give myself to Thee, uh-huh. and I can at the cross.
what you've been missing <laughs> glory to God hallelujah men gather <laughs> oh my god we're excited we're excited the program is already out we're gonna start with career finances money building wealth in the morning which will lead us to lunch and then in the afternoon we go into those other things that women are not supposed to hear Hallelujah. So, we want all men to keep time. There are many service tables where you can buy food. That day you don't need to carry food. The food that will be on the ground. People are going to, we have contracted many companies to cook. So you have no reason not to come what? Early. We do exercise and games early, probably about 8, 9 there. 10, praise, worship begins 11. 
First program. Praise God. And then you're going to see what God is going to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Of course, women's conference. Hallelujah. Men, eh? I hope you're hearing it. Eh? <laughs> you provoke us to anger. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're excited about what God is going to do. We're excited about what God is going to do. Those of you who are led to give for the men's conference, give while it's still early. Women's conference, give while it's still early. Our budgets are big. We just don't know how to twist hands. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah, because the, the funeral people are givers. Don't, don't believe what is out there. <laughs> we are rich. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have people who give. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me bless your offering right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you for the most generous people in the world. Continue to amaze them, establish them, walk through them, and for them to the glory of God in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed and believed and all saints said let's go straight to the word our reading today is going to come from the gospel of Matthew and a story is given specifically from the ninth chapter we see Jesus Christ north of Jerusalem and um, we have a story there of the transfiguration. He takes Peter, James, and John, which were the inner circle. He takes those three for prayer on the Mount of Transfiguration. And then he lets them on the side to pray. As he is praying, we all know that story. And eventually, we know that in there we see the prophet Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus. Peter tells Jesus, why don't we build tents for these two people so they stay, you see, because he was lost for words. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward, but it's important for us to see where we begin from for me to establish clearly the text that God wants you to receive today. And we know that the face of Jesus was shining. And they come down from that experience uh, and come down the mountain. Of course, they had left certain disciples somewhere. So that means Peter, James, and John, with Jesus and the rest of the disciples, were left home. Now, the scriptures tell us, verses 14, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straight away all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. Why were they amazed? The Amplified Version explains it. Because they saw his face glistening. His face was shining because of what had happened at the mountain. So they are amused and then they come to greet him. Let's go back to the KJV. And so... As he's walking back, you envision him walking back with Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says, and, the, and, and he asked the scribes, what question ye them? What is, what is this thing? He finds some contention within and, and, and questions about. And the Bible says, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wherever, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he formeth and gnasheth with his teeth, KJV, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. So you see, there's an alteration, altercation in this group of people. Why? Because the disciples that stayed behind could not cast out a certain what? Demon out of a man's son. If you are a reader of the Bible, I will charge you to go back and Search deeply why Peter, James, Peter, John, and who? Who? James. Yes, Peter, James, and John are not with this group. There is a big probability that if they were part of that group, perhaps they would not have had that problem. 
and that we can justify through scripture if you go studying very keenly, you'd understand that even with the 12 disciples that Jesus Christ had, many of these disciples functioned slightly different from others based on the authority with which God gave them. James, Peter, and John were unique people. That's why Paul calls them pillars, Galatians 2. He says when Cephas, John, and James, which seem to be pillars, saw the grace that was given unto me and Barnabas to the uncircumcised, as it was given unto them to the circumcised, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to preach to the heathen as they to the Jews. They were pillars. There was something unique. Maybe, just maybe, I'm just saying, that conversation might have been different. Because when you study Jesus, there are things that he showed these three that he never showed the twelve. And there are things that he revealed to the twelve that he never revealed with the five thousand that came for food. Do you agree? And so the Bible says, when he was among the thousands, he spoke in parables. And without a parable, spake he not. But the Bible says, when he was alone with his disciples, he expounded the meaning of these things. But yet, even in that experience of expounding, we still have a three that you would take aside and say, let's go to the mountain and you tarry with me. Definitely, they might have had a place in the spirit above the rest. Somebody shout hallelujah. But that is for you to go and study. Anyway, so we see that the rest of the, the, the disciples that stay back are the guys with whom a man has brought a son who is demon-possessed. He's demon-possessed. This story is written in Mark. It's written in Matthew. So you, you, you need to understand very clearly the kind of picture it gives when a man has brought his son and they're not able to cast out. He had given them provisional power. So we expect that it's supposed to be working and it is not working. Imagine a boy is, is possessed and you know, you're casting out these things. People are saying, hey, yeah, yeah, those people, they always cast out these things. They're, Jesus is not around, but it's okay, let them do this. And they try and try and they cannot cast out. So an altercation comes through the Pharisees, hey, you guys are fake. Oh, you know. So Jesus comes into that mix. What's going on? The man gives his story. And the Bible says in verses 19, and Jesus answered him and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. That means the problem with the disciples was faith. Do we agree? The problem with the disciples was faith. It was faith. I'm going to build something there. And they brought him unto him. They brought the boy. And when he saw him, the demon in the boy, straight away the spirit tore him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. The manifestation of the demons immediately was there. And the Bible says, and he asked his father. So this picture, demons are strangling, ooh, he's screaming, and then he turns to the father. How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, since he was a what? A child. That means he wasn't born like that. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire, into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us, and help us. Are you hearing? Now the Bible says, and if Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now I want you to, 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 to first go into the mind of the father and see what he is thinking when the disciples have failed. And then he brings this boy to Jesus and he told him, if you can have compassion on us, if you can help us, help us. That means he is looking for help, but he is not even sure. If you can help us, if you can do anything. You see, that's not a man who is sure that God can do. That's a man saying, if you can, please what? Heal my boy, deliver my boy. But you'll not judge him. Why? Because the disciples that were left behind had failed. So that's how this man views Jesus. You see what I'm saying? If you can, if you can do anything, they've done everything we think should be done. Now there is no more. If you can do something, that's a desperate father. 
crying for his son. And Jesus is not where this man is. Jesus is saying that if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help mine unbelief. What a contradiction. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. In other words, I, I believe you can do it, but again, I doubt. Help the part of me that doubts, but I believe you, but help the part of me that what? That doubts. And the Bible says when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried, listen, rent him sore and came out of him. And he was one as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast out this devil? Why could we not cast this spirit out? Now they are concerned. We know you explained privately. Why could we not cast this demon out? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Why could we not cast this thing out? And verses 29, and he said unto them, This kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, that he would not that any man should know it, etc. We're going to come back to a certain line there that I want to emphasize before the end. Now, there is a, an instruction we lost in that text. And it's clearly there if you look deeply. Why? He is having a conversation with a man whose son is possessed. How long has he had this thing? or since he was a child. If you can help us, please deliver my boy. And Jesus tells him, if you can believe, all things are possible. And straight away, the father cried out, Lord, I believe with tears in his eyes. Help my unbelief. Something was supposed to come there and answer this man. But an interruption comes. The next verse tells us, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, some people, I think, were somewhere telling him, aha, Jesus has come. Let's see whether it will work. So a group of people come what? Running. Jesus was not looking for that attention yet. And how do I know? The Bible says, when he saw them running, coming to him, immediately, he didn't wait for them to, gather he immediately rebuked the word the spirit and when the spirit leaves if you go down uh, uh in verses 30 the moment it's done they departed thence and passed through galilee and he would not that any man should know it that means jesus didn't want them to spread what was working in his life at that particular point so you can agree with me that at the point where he finds this when he sees men running there's a conversation he's having with this man, but because he sees the crowd is coming, he pauses that conversation and does what he's supposed to do and immediately goes to Galilee. Should the congregation or that audience ha have not turned quicker to take the attention Jesus did not want, this conversation would have continued. Do you agree? Now, that's where I want us to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because you see, the Lord showed me something about how faith works. And in this text alone, you see three kinds of believers and three kinds of perception or interpretation concerning faith. And I want you to walk this journey with me. You have the man who has his son. You have the disciples that cannot cast out this devil. And then you have Jesus. The perfect picture. Are you seeing where we're going? Let's begin with this man.
The fact that he could carry his child to disciples to pray. Or perhaps he thought Jesus would be there the day he brought his son. It means that in him there was an ounce of faith. But he was the kind of believer that even though he believes that God works, he does not know how God works. Even though he believes that God can do, he is not sure of how far that power goes. But he has enough faith to bring his boy to what? For prayer. Or if you would create another scenario, it would be likened to a person who is not so sure about what God is able to do. Is not so sure whether even God is willing to do that miracle for them, either because of the magnitude of the sickness, the magnitude of the problem, the magnitude of the trouble, the magnitude of the challenge. So they are not sure whether even Jesus can fix it. Some are not even sure whether it's a will of God to fix it. But they have enough faith to go for prayers. There's that category. And Jesus was trying to help this man get to somewhere. But unfortunately, this conversation was interrupted. But as I continue this journey, you will see what Jesus wanted to teach this man. Because I can tell you the biggest percentage of Christian in the world are like that man. They have enough faith to carry their issue to somebody who can pray. And I believe that some of us men of God, we've, or many of us as men of God, we've actually enjoyed that place with them. Why? Because it means that they will always call us. They are eternally dependent on us. Without our phone call, their member will die. Without our text message, their marriage will fail. The day you're not around, something will crash. The day you don't attend service, the day you don't preach and you're out of the country, Apostle Grace, the day they brought that lame man, oh, he will not walk. Why? Because Apostle was not And guess what? The biggest percentage of Christians in the world think that way. They are like that. They need some sort of aid. They function best with a faith without them operating in the life of another person who has played their part. You understand what I'm saying? And such people, the danger with such people is because of desperacy, they, they will do anything that is why today you see people who are cheated and then they tell them, you know, to see the man of God, you have to come with a million shillings. If you don't come with the money, you will not what? Heal. Oh, what the heck? I want my child to be what? To be healed. Besides, I pay the physicians millions of shillings. You see? So what loss do I have? I am what? Desperate. Even when they know that the miracle should not be bought. Some know. Some don't even know. And not because they cannot know, but they don't care. They're desperate. Some are in the class of hoping. You go here, then you pray. Then they tell you, ha, there is a certain man of God somewhere. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment that one touches you, all your problems are gone. Then you go and then they pray. And then the disciple cannot cast out. Then they say, ah, I'll leave that one. There is one I know. He just looks at you. Ah, are you sure? I've told you this one just the moment his eyes touch you like this. Then they look at you. Wah! Nothing what? <laughs> Changes. Oh, I've prayed. I've fasted. I'm tired. I've, hey, 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 hey. Come on, touching, feeding, what? No, 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 no. There is next level. There is another one I know. You just need to write your name at the gate when you're entering and go back. Your miracle shall be done. Then you what? Oh, oh, oh there is one I know. Very is rare to get. But the moment he says, Hello? You see, 
But even the attitude that they bring to the man of God is, if you can, do some. They don't believe in what the servants of God can do. They don't even understand what Jesus can do for them. And they live that life that way. Oh, oh, oh. They have robbed those ones. They bear marks of deception. When you look at them, they look the part. There are people you can look at. Even when they are coming to church, you see they are already tired. You see? And then they start reliving their story. And then I went to prophet so-and-so. And then I went to apostle so-and-so. Then we went at pastor so-and-so. Then, then after we left, then we went to evangelist so-and-so. Then we went to a certain prophetic woman. Simanyoni, what road? Eh? You've gone everywhere. Why? You want a husband. That thing has to leave you. It comes at night and it uses you. Oh, oh you understand? They're like that. That's how they are. Everything that they think can help them. They go for it. Those ones can never sit in church. They can never settle under teaching. Even now, as I'm teaching, they're saying, Hurry, I want you to pray. <laughs> you know those kinds of people. I wish he finishes the sermon very quickly. You're joking. I'm still preaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the hard truth. God doesn't want you there. One time I preached a sermon like this and an older man of God who has been in the faith for some time called me on the side and told me, you know, you're a young man, let me advise you. When you are teaching things, don't reveal all your secrets because if they understand how these things work, uh, they might not come back again. So I realized but that's how they build ministry. They always used to warn us, ah, don't, don't tell everything. Keep your, some kind of secret for you as a man of God. Says that you stay mystic. Your mystery, they, they don't know where you're going to pass. That wisdom is not from above. No, no, no. Look at Paul. Paul says, I am accountable of no man's blood because I have revealed the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. All the counsel of God. That means by the time Paul is done, he doesn't want to be held accountable because every ounce of revelation coming out of my spirit to you is my responsibility but from God to make sure that I give everything that he has placed in the inside of me Otherwise, I'm accountable of certain bloods. Why? Because God will ask me, if you knew this and you knew that it works, why did you not give it if I gave it to you? And why do you keep what's, what you don't even need? Do you understand what I'm saying? Freely given, freely we what? We give. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then we go to the next category of Christian. I hope you're following. They have faith. They understand authority. They pray. They have testimonies. People cast out, cast out, cast out. They have what? Testimonies. And then some things refuse. Some work. Some refuse. Some work. And then if they are so proud... The danger of that kind of group, the disciples, if they are so proud, when it doesn't work, they'll build a doctrine to give excuse of why it didn't work. Now, that, the most dangerous group is that one. Because it bears the pride of what has worked. And it knows its way around many things. It has its reputation that it can do something about it as the disciples. But... Something comes and they cannot change it. And they don't bear the humility like the ones we've read about to ask God, why could we not cast out this spirit? Let me tell you. This is something I learned many years ago. That if I pray for somebody or something and I fail to get an answer when I know that I'm positioned right spiritually, I have been humble enough to ask God, 
Why can I not get this person healed? And I'm amazed at how many answers God has given me. And usually, if this person can follow through with me, we get the answer. We get the answer. Because the power of God's working, the, 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 the mystery of God's working power, let me say it that way, it so amazes in how correlated it is to the spirit that is so humble enough to be teachable when it cannot fix an issue. Some of you, you are, you fail to fix certain things, but you're not even humble enough to ask or seek answers. And the reason why you're in that trouble is because you're too proud to even ask. You're dying. Yet there's somebody in the world who has an answer. Some of us were even so proud that we cannot ask God. We cannot ask God. One time I was dealing with a story of somebody that had a disease, a lady, and I prayed for her several times, several times, several times. And I started to see that there was, I didn't see the change. And so, on my side, I felt the faith was there. Everything was right. And then one day I go to the Lord and I said, why can I not heal this woman? And the Lord told me, she's dealing with unforgiveness. You see, small little things. So it's not that the healing power is not available for you to heal her. It's just that even when it is availed, something in there is killing and short-circuiting the work of God. Oh, oh, how? Let me explain it. Do you know that God would not allow a certain grace to settle on Simon the sorcerer because he had bitterness in his spirit? See, some of us, when we preach grace, we start to disqualify even the obvious ways that God has revealed through Scripture. You think Simon the sorcerer was not existed in the present truth? Wasn't he a result of the new birth? He was born again. It is not about even the money that wanted to buy the miracle. It is the girl of bitterness and the bond of iniquity in his spirit. And they tell him, you don't have a part here. There was something in his heart that was not right. But Simon had believed. How many of you know Simon had believed? Simon had believed. He had believed. He had believed. When Paul is buffeted because of pride, you remember, and to keep me uh, from getting puffed, the Lord sent a messenger to buffet me. They had exceeded in the place of revelation. The abundance of revelation was upon me. And to calm me down, God allowed the messenger to buffet me. Wasn't Paul under grace? Wasn't there grace available to heal him of that infirmity? Yes, it was. But there was a more intricate heart issue with Paul. That's a conversation I know many of grace preachers do not want to have. Because sometimes it slaps their theology. And not because this is, not, this is the problem. No, no, it is because sometimes in preaching the revelation of the person of God, many of us see and operate in part. Paul was under grace. Oh, he told you that there's now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Did he teach that? Yes. But the very man is buffeted by a messenger. And at that point, God is trying to get into this man to tell him, no, the revelation is too much and you're getting inflated with a certain pride that is not, that is not suitable for the place and office that you've been called. All Paul needed to do was to repent of his pride. That's all. Metanoia, to change his mind. And at that particular point, the devil would not have any legal ground over his body. Are you following what I'm saying? 
So I tell this lady, you, you need to let go. You need to let go. She had a past relationship and her husband broke her so bad. And then she kept cursing and in, in her sleep. And, and when she was waking up, she hates this person. I wish she this. And, and she's a born again woman, but she's so bitter in her spirit. And I had to tell her, the Lord tells me, you either let go or you heal. Or, or you die, sorry. And she chose to forgive. And when she forgave, she was what? Healed. So that means that the, the power of God was not available to heal her. It only means that she frustrated the work of God on her life. These things are important for some of you to note. They are very important for some of you to note. Because you know, when bad words come in your spirit, the Bible says they dry the bones. Isn't that true? Do you know that even negative energy, those thoughts of this person hurt me, already are bad words in your soul. Do you know what they're doing to your body? To just sit up and think all oh, this person, no, uh, you understand? Because remember, you're speaking those words to yourself. God is helping somebody. God is helping somebody. I don't know who, but God is helping somebody. And I know people who say, I would rather die than forgive that fool. And then they what? Die. You see? So this next group of people, if you are a demonstrator of power, if you know a certain place with God where you have seen miracles, be humble when you cannot fix certain things. Sometimes the issue might be very simple to, to talk to this person and you get an answer. And it's amazing. Every time I've taken time to pray about certain things and I get answers and I share it with these people, many of them have been healed. And sometimes God can tell you, no, 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 no. <laughs> the issue was with you. Fix yourself a bit. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yes, you know the scriptures. You confess them, yes. But what if you are dealing with something personally in your body, in your life, in your career, in your dream, but it has failed to change? Are you following what I'm saying? These are the disciples of Jesus. They were given authority to cast out devils, but they could not cast out certain devils. You see what I'm saying? And then they are humble enough to ask Jesus, why could we not cast out these devils? And Jesus says, because this kind goeth not away except by prayer and fasting. Then some legal people built a doctrine around that portion of scripture. Because some people think that that, and, and some of you who have been with me know that, but let me help those who have just joined recently. This kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Many ministers, when they get to that portion of scripture, they mean to say that there are certain devils that cannot live except by prayer and fasting. So, this demon gets on an individual and somebody tells them, but you know, brother, take off some time and fast. And pray. And then this person fasts and prays. And God is amazing. This person gets the miracle. And when they get the miracle, because they did not understand the, the, the heart of God, they don't have the revelation of who God is and what he has done through the person of Jesus Christ. They fasted, it worked, and then they build a doctrine around it saying that I have to fast. Or if you get to this trouble, you have to fast and pray for this thing to what? To work in your life. And I have a story of a lady who had HIV and her child, and she fasted. The husband had died of HIV. She fasted and prayed for many days. And she, the husband had died earlier. She fasted and prayed for many days. And she was healed of HIV. And her child too was healed of HIV. Now, here was the trouble. So she goes around telling the world how she was healed of HIV and how her child was healed of HIV. 
And she did that for many years. I think now close to more than 30 years of doing that. So one day I sat this lovely lady down and asked her, in your teaching about the healing of HIV and your child, have you ever seen one person healed of HIV? And she said, no. I knew why. I knew why. Because in her fasting and prayer, she did not know exactly what happened. And because she doesn't know the pattern, she cannot reproduce the grace to get the same miracle. And we have people like that who have built doctrines around what they did. And God in his infinite mercy and wisdom could have helped them stumble on something for their breakthrough because in there they did something right, but without understanding. You understand what I'm saying? Without what? Without understanding. Like in life, there are things you can do by luck. You can stumble on something by what? By luck. You remember in, in, uh, in high school, we used to, I don't know whether they still do it now, in high school, we used to have those tests that used to have options, A, B, C, D, E. You read, and this one I know it's D. Sako. Sako, the right what? Answer. Then you get on something. You skip it. You answer the rest. But there are like two or three things that you honestly don't have a clue. Some of you, if your neighbor is near you, <laughs> if your neighbor is not near, or you have those kids who, they're right when they're like, then the invigorator comes in and says, 10 minutes to go, and then they walk out. Then you say, now, instead of leaving this thing, I can do something here. <laughs> picky, picky, bonky, father had a donkey, donkey died, father cried, picky, picky, bonky. Mm. Now you get out of that game. Mm. Let's go, 10 minutes. Wah! And then the paper comes back. <laughs> and you are right. And those two or three gave you 90. They're the ones that leaped you from 75 to 90. Then you get back home and then you show your daddy a paper. Then he asks you, what do you want, you smart boy? <laughs> you get it? So, yes, the miracle has happened. You got 90%. But it was... Hey, you understand? So, some things are like that. Some, some of us... Some of us here have had miracles with God we cannot replicate because honestly, we carry no revelation of the pattern. We have no understanding of how it works. We just stumbled. Prevenient grace. Sunesis is quickened. The critical faculty. And you found yourself that day in the right position and the miracle happened, but you cannot explain it. And then you say, the things of God, they are confusing. Translate that in your local language. You'll understand what it means. Somebody shout hallelujah. But back to what I'm trying to tell us here. So, let's go back to the text. Oh, let me finish the story of the lady. She could not see another healing of HIV. Because she did not understand the way. Why? Because every time she preached, it was about the prayer and fasting. People fasted. People prayed. And then she built groups of people to pray with. I will come on, at your home on Thursday. I will, uh, uh, Tuesday, I will come. I will come on Monday. And then they prepare. What? Cook food for the woman of God who got healed. Mako ba 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 ba. Mako ba 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 ba. The anointing that heals, I have it. He do nothing. 
and we know people who go for deliverance up to today and they tell them this week is a week of deliverance tell your neighbor deliverance tell them deliverance then they say and because it is deliverance we are going to fast the whole week and we are going to break that thing off you and then you see women scream, that thing which had caught you which had caught your mother which had caught your father that thing that makes shoes not to fit you it is going and Deliverance week. Fasting and what? Prayer. Service begins at this time. And God again is in, inf in his infinite wisdom and mercy. Some of them get what? The miracle. But they can't explain the what? The process or pattern. So fasting and prayer becomes the reason why certain demons leave. Let me tell you, that is not true. Let me prove it for somebody who has never really studied this. A similar, the same story is written in Matthew. Same story is written in what? In Matthew. Let's go there and see how Jesus, how, 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 how it's, it's given. You'll understand that we're not talking about demons here. Matthew chapter 17. You'll read from verses 14. There came to him a man kneeling down saying, Lord, have mercy on me. My child is a lunatic, so vexed. Oftentimes he falls into the fire and into water. Like he had explained. You remember? Verses 16, and I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. And then Jesus says, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. You remember? Something. And Jesus, what? Rebuked the devil and it departed out of him and the child was cured from that very what? That very hour. Isn't it the same story? Now, we go down and then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. You see, here he was clear. Matthew picked it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Matthew what? Picked it. He said, because of your unbelief. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind of what? Answer me. This kind of goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. You see? Come on, clap for Jesus. This kind of unbelief that means it's not enough for you to know how to quote scriptures. Sometimes. You have to set aside some time to pray and fast about certain issues. Not because the demons are uncurable. Not because that demon is so strong. But because of your unbelief. Now that should change everything. That should, ch should change everything. Why? Because now we see the prayer and the fasting on my part was to help me have the right faith to deal with the spirit. Not that this spirit is too strong that without praying and fasting it cannot go. No. No. It's not in the strength of the spirit. Otherwise, the, the sacrifice of Christ is not enough. The sacrifice of Jesus is not enough. If you tell me, okay, Jesus died for my sins, but there's a demon. Oh, that one. You put aside Jesus' sacrifice and fast. You see, those are works. You've gone back to works. And many of you, the reason why you've fasted and prayed and not seen answers, it is very simple. You think that your fasting will take away the demon. You think that your prayer will take away the demon. Did you know God has never called a Christian to apply prayer toward him over any demon spirit? It's not in scripture. He says, these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. 
they will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. In my name, listen, they shall cast out devils. He didn't say they will pray to me. He says that the demons leave them. Do you understand what I'm saying? In my name, they will cast out devils. Have you, have you, have you noticed when I'm praying for people? Have you noticed when I'm praying for people? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to heal right now. Walk. Not further from heaven. Power down rain. Let it flood the body of this man and heal him. No, no. When we get to the place of the sick, we don't pray. Hey! We cast out. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you cast out and it doesn't work, the problem is not that you should go into deeper prayer. Father, help us, help us, help us. I'm fasting until this thing goes. You got it all wrong. This fasting and prayer is there to help you fix yourself to a point where, eh, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? This fasting and prayer is there to sharpen you, to equip you, to strengthen you, to uphold and undergird you. And that's when I realized that even though God has given us authority, the degrees vary in function. And there are certain things we can, in, we can do to increase the degree of the authority functioning on our lives or to frustrate or suppress the degree of the authority functioning on our lives, even though we have all been given authority. That is why some of you think, hey, you say, D, I shall not die. I refuse to die. But you're dying every day. You've quoted all the scriptures in the book and you know them by word. You know how to, hey, in Jesus' name, me. You know, when I, was, when I was a little younger, I used to get intimidated by people who had very strong jargons and distinct vocabularies when they are praying. Have you been around people? When they start praying, you say, ha, here, if God, you don't hear, you're also not fair. Have you been around such people? Father God, we want to thank you, the power. The power. And you're like, mm, mm, mm. that man can pray. <laughs> no, it's not about how, what the man prays. No, it's about the authority that man commands when he prays. Somebody shout hallelujah. No, 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 no. Mature out of that. It's not about the jargon. It's not about the sentences. You know, we have people who, who, who even go on YouTube. I've, I've seen some Christians who go on YouTube and then they look for prayers by so and so because some men know how to construct sentences. People have constructed, you have listened to every YouTube audio, but you're still sick. And chances are you won't hear you because it's not about the jargon. It's not about the vocabulary. It's not about the wonderful construction of sentences. It's about the authority that that man or woman has in God. It's about that. It's not about anything. Uh, 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 uh. It's about that. It's the authority. Look at how Jesus, look at how Jesus did when he was dealing with the lame. Let's go back to Jesus' story. Be thou healed. Hey, didn't Jesus have vocabulary? He had vocabulary. Little girl, rise. Lazarus, come forth. Peter, walk. Rogers, raise up. Anita, it's changed. Robert, your house is healed. No, it's not about the words. It's the authority. It's the authority. It's the authority. For somebody to say that it must change. And heaven and earth will hear that a woman say that it cannot happen. My child will not die. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is called faith. That is called faith. But God here has given us the mystery of churning our craft. He has given us the secret of growing what he has given us by God. Of influencing the spiritual realm a certain way he says you can increase this thing you you can move this thing to the next level 
Not because the demon is stronger. No. But because you're not positioned right. Position yourself right. Just position yourself right. That's what Jesus is trying to tell. You remember the time when they come to Jesus and they tell him you have a problem. Your disciples are not what? Fasting. And he told them, no, they sh it's okay. I'm here. Meaning, if they can't fix it because they didn't fast, I'm here. <laughs> if they can't fix it because I, they cannot pray, I pray. You, you see Jesus separating himself to go on mountains, praying night and day. What is he doing? He's not going there to deal with a certain demon that is disturbing brother so and so. He's going in the presence of God to build himself up in the most holy faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's how it works. The scripture says in John 15 verses 5. I am the vine. I'm trying to talk about the place of prayer. He says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches, and he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. He says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast off as a branch and is withered. They look withered. Their works are withered. Their function is withered. Their applications are withered. Their prayers. Have you been around people who pray dry prayers? I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. One time I was passing a church. It was about lunchtime. And I was going home. And there was this church that had a lunch hour. And there was a guy in there praying. But it was the driest prayer I ever had a man pray. Mokama, mokama, mokama. But it's... You, no, no, no. I'm talking about the spiritual person. I could hear a man pray, but it was so dry. It was withered. Some of you, even your prayers don't intimidate the devil. You start praying and he says, ah, ah, let her pray. No, no, no. Leave her. He even fights for you. Ah, leave her to pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. But there are people. They just say, Father God. Do you remember last Thursday when the service was ending and we were making an altar call and the rain started to come? I'm going to tell you something that happened that, that many of you don't know. No, no, no. Beyond what you saw. Let me explain. When the rain came and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, this rain should not. Let it, be, let it hold up. The rain immediately lifted. A woman walked here. She stood there and screamed. And the Holy Ghost told me, let her in. This woman came and told me, that I and a certain man are responsible for this rain that was coming up. Somebody was doing some sort of witchcraft for rain to fall when people are receiving Christ. She confessed everything there. It is so amazing. When the rain was stopped that day, she told me urine had to go through her. Because they had some guy have been creating rain and stopping it. Now, people come and they're speaking English, but they come with a, uh, if you're here and you're under some other spirit. <laughs> I arrest you in Jesus' name. Do you understand what I'm saying? At first I thought she was just a mad person. No. Because they're telling me how they make rain. I say, what? So the thing on her started shaking. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We shouldn't. The guy, even she should mention the name of the guy doing it. I also sent him something. <laughs> yeah. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Now he has to tell other people. Now, some of you might not believe. But it happened here. It happened here. It happened here. And she told me every time it, is, it stops, the brain stops, I have to, something has to pass out of me. And it went out. Man, people, people, people have things. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he which is in the world, God means it. God means it. God means it. God means it. Some of you, I told you a story when we were in Mukono. And we used to have a witch doctor who used to play Miss Boo. Boo, Boo. When we are praying, some of you were there. When the overnight, this guy is playing music, playing music, playing music, playing music. We forgave him the first time. Then I got mad. In the overnight, as the next preaching, I called Apostle him and I told him, come and I show you power. I looked at those machines that, that were facing the church. Pastor was next to me like this. And I said, burn! No! Immediately! <laughs> and the man ran mad. The witch doctor ran mad. Immediately. From that day, when he saw me walking this way, he... <laughs> he started calling me a witch doctor yeah yeah they are going to call you names somebody said hallelujah but you don't play with Christians no 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 weapon fashioned against us shall prosper even to know that we have the power to uproot uh, 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 uh. sometimes you have to say no enough Sometimes it either ends or it ends. And it's not the first time I've burned things. It's not the first time. There was another day I was, I was preaching. And the guy, you know those guys who have cars that have speakers on? Boop, 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 boop. And they're announcing some artist. He's going to be, and he was a secular artist. Now this guy makes a mistake. Apostle, you remember the guy? He was there too. And then the guy comes and packs next to where I was preaching. Boo, 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 boo. I'm in the middle of teaching. And I said, Father, I burn those machines now. They, fire went through all of them. That's how they drove their car away. Let me tell you, we are entering a time where Christians are going to be feared. By the time you open your mouth on her, you know who you're opening a mouth on. Somebody shout hallelujah. We can exercise mercy and grace. But a time will come when we turn and say enough is enough. If I'm a woman of God, this has to cease today. And God will hear. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. That's the kind of church God has raised. You walk to a situation and say it must change today enough and, and you're not doing it because you're emotional you know what is inside you somebody shout hallelujah when you learn to abide in god you don't get intimidated there are things that don't shake me they can come and i will sleep because i know where i am that's why i tell people when you know when you come on when you know who you are with god some things don't shake you. They don't shake you. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the doctor says is in your body. There's nothing I can't pray out. Because I know how to pray. I know how to pray. Devil, I know how to pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says if, you, if, if a man abideth not in me, he will wither. But if ye abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, he says you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. So there is a place where, what, what, is, what is the Greek word for abiding? Staying present. He says if you stay present to me and my words stay present in you. You see? So it's a symbiotic relationship. You read the word. Are you hearing me? 
But you create time to stay in the presence of God. Many of the Christians who are dealing with things that are slapping you left, right and center, even your prayer life has a question. And I'm not talking about prayer as a work. I'm talking about prayer as in building a relationship with God. Because some people think that prayer is a work. It's not a work. It's a relationship issue. To say that I can actually sit with God and acquaint myself with Him. He says, acquaint yourself with me. Acquaint yourself with me. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Is that what the Bible says? Acquaint yourself with God. Submit yourselves to God. Then you resist the devil. He flees. Build a life of prayer. And you're not going in prayer because you have a problem. You're not going in prayer to address your problem. Some of you go in prayer now. Eh? It's a period where the, the, the boyfriend doesn't want to talk to her. Mashokoto. Jokotokoto. Marikatototo. Every toe in the world is toe. Why? Because the guy has refused to answer her call. You will answer it by fire, by force. You're reactionary. That's not a relationship. That's not a relationship. God says, stay present to me and see how much fruit will come out of you. Stay present to me and let my words abide. You know those things where you say, I'm coming on Thursday, you're, you're sitting in service. What do you think you're doing? You're being present. You're, being, you're building some things. Let me give you an example. How many people, one day or two days or a certain day, you came with a very painful illness, sickness, pain, and as you were worshiping or praying or something, a pain left you. Put up your hands. Camera, I want you to show that. That was not prayer. Somebody just sat in the meeting and God started fixing their body and that's how everything fixes. That's how your marriage fixes. That's how your job fixes. That's how you... That's why you're seeing progress in your life. Why? Because you are abiding in the presence of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm not wasting time here. Some people might not know, but every, where do you go every Thursday? Tell them, give me time. I'll explain. Just give me time. I will explain. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. So you abide and stay present. You stay present. You stay present. On, on, on the knowledge of scripture, add your presence with God. Add that place where you can. So me, for example, I can't sit for a minute that I'm talking about an issue with God. I don't. No, 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 no. If it's something on my body, I address it. That's the realm of addressing. It's not the realm of, you understand? If I've missed it, I'll ask God, why have I missed it? And then he will show me and I fix it. We, the point is, the biggest time of my life is just to build a relationship. But as you build it, the fruit starts to come out. You see what I'm saying? But some of you, all of your minutes of life, of prayer, you're addressing something. Father, my children, my children, my children, you're wasting time. It won't work. You're praying for your son, your daughter. They're just worsened. Why? Because you're praying the wrong way. God wants a relationship. The things that you're asking for, he can fix easily through you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just fix you. It's the same thing with fasting. In Matthew 6, 16, last verse, he says, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto me to fast verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear unto men not to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. That means your fasting rewards you, not anybody else. Even if you say, I'm fasting for, for, for this person. Listen, even if you're fasting for somebody, it's to the end that it will position you in the right place to fix their issue. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? But some of you have been doing it wrong. You're fasting for your uncle to heal and is worsening. Why? Because this fasting is there to reward you with the faith that you need to fix that disease. The life of healing demonstration of power was never meant to be a place of prayer. It was supposed to be a place of action. It, some, that's why sometimes when, when I'm charged, you see me tell people, get up in Jesus' name and walk, and they just walk. Because I understood that all you need to do is to charge. You're like a battery. And then get full. Somebody shout hallelujah. And when you're charged, you see, when you're charged, you don't need to pray. Now I've just made a sentence and power came out. So, that's not for Apostle Grace, the special man of God. That is for every believer. Now, you see how things are happening? Right now, as I'm speaking, the anointing is moving. As I'm speaking, power is flowing. As I'm speaking, somebody who is healed, right now, is receiving their healing. I see a woman who has been used by demon spirits. These things come and use her at night. Oh, I actually see eight of them. And right now the power to deliver is available and God is delivering women from familiar spirits that have been espousing them as husbands. You see, I'm just speaking. Because that is how faith works. When we say, next year, this year, you are a success. We are not just claiming it for you to have a nice evening. We are speaking from a place of power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because these are years of exercising myself. There are times I get so charged that some people can't even stand near me. Some people can't even shake my hand because of the what? The presence. I've had experiences where my own wife can't come near me in my own house because I'm charged. Do you understand what I'm saying? God has not called you to live a normal life. Forget about it. It's already too late. It's already too late. Your daughter comes back with some demon. You look at her and it starts rolling her. And you tell her, never go back there. You don't need to explain anything. The power speaks. Somebody said, hallelujah. Your boy misbehaves and you'll point at him and he gets slain and rolls for hours. And then he stands up and tells you, daddy, I'll never do it again. You have not slapped him, but you've released something on his life. That is where we are going. Somebody said, hallelujah. That's what God has given us. You enter a place and you must change it. Because you abide with the father. That's the place of fruitfulness. You cannot build anything and it fails. You can't. Why? Because it comes with a certain authority. When we pray for you, it comes with a certain authority. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's the life God has called us to. Not less. Not less. Now get up and we charge. I want you to just raise your voice and start to pray. Come on, raise your voice. Now, <laughs> people are going to fix major issues today. Come on, open your mouth and start to speak. Open your mouth and start to speak. 
The power that raised Christ from the dead is inside you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Make something happen. 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 Something must change tonight. The power is inside you. The power is inside you. Your eyes on the sparrow and your hand it comforts me from the ends of the earth to the depths of my heart let your mercy and strength be seen you call me to your as angels understand for your glory may you draw all men as your love and grace demand let's sing it yes I will Come on, 
Come on. Oh, I see deliverance taking place. I see deliverance taking place. I see witchcraft leave. I see witchcraft leave. I see witchcraft leave a family. Come on, start to bring them. I see witchcraft leave a family. I see witchcraft leave. Hey, Abako, spirit of death. I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Bring them, bring them, bring them. Spirit of death, get out. Lose her, lose her, lose him, lose him. Start to bring them in front. Spirit of death, there are people here who are dealing with the spirit of death. Wherever you are, the power of God is coming there. Your spirit of death, loose, loose. Put them down, put them down, put them down, put them down. Somebody has a spirit of death in their stomach and you feel something has been sitting there. It has it's been moving like you have a creature in your womb. Get out, you devil, in the name of Jesus. Bring them here. Bring them here. Sharabara de go sata. Zeketele paralego. Brado go shikatapa. Zikelepa. You've been having a spirit that has been giving you headaches. Constant headaches. Your spirit of darkness. Loose. Eh, Sharabagosa. Loose. Spirit of infirmity. I command you to leave. Leave that woman's kidneys. Leave that man's heart. Leave that woman's liver. Leave that person's pancreas. Get out of their body. In Jesus' name. Somebody feels like you want to vomit. You feel like something, something is here. You feel like it's going to come out. Hey, let it come out in the name of Jesus. That's witchcraft. Get out, you devil. Lung disease, I command you to leave. Bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Bring them in front. Bring them in front. Come on, bring them in front. Family witchcraft is hey, it's living you. Somebody, your name was mentioned to inherit family witchcraft. <laughs> I arrest that spirit to leave you now. Go! Witchcraft in your workplace. I command you to go. Receive it. Hey, Shana Balani. Hey, Abore Negosa. Witchcraft in your workplace. There's a lady, your hands have been burning lately. And you picked that from work. I rebuke that spirit of witchcraft. I command it to leave you. You've been feeling heat in your hands. Get out, you spirit of darkness. There's a person here. You were almost running mad. Actually, there are people here listening to me. Spirits of madness, bipolar, schizophrenia, split personality disorder. Hey, power of the Ghost! Loose, loose, loose. Somebody, the devil arrested your dream world. You don't dream at all. Or when you dream, things come and strangle you. Hey, power the ghost! Loose! You devil! Come on, bring those people in front. Carry them here. Hey, 
That's madness. Come on, bring them here. Put them down. Epilepsy. Epilepsy. I rebuke you. Some of you are going to feel like coughing. Some things are coming out of you. Power the There's a lady I need to pray for. Hey, Yaro, come and pray. Who is next? Come. Put up your hands. You spirit of struggle and strife, I have cast you from the root. I have cast you from the root. You spirit of darkness that has been frustrating this woman's destiny, wherever you came from, I have rebuked you from the root. I declare and I declare that from today you're going to have smooth sails. You're not going to struggle. Nothing is going to come through struggle. In Jesus' name. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing now. There's a young lady, your name is Maria. Your name is Maria. You've been having a headache for a long time. If you're not among the slain, walk here. If you can walk. There's a lady called Maria. She has been having a very bad headache for a long time. If she's not among these who are down, I want that woman to walk to me now. Your, your head has been paining for a long time. Where is that lady? Where is that lady? Where is that lady? Maria, is she there? Come quickly. Lord, let me leave. That's Maria. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. You're Maria? This is Maria too. Yeah, but this is the one. I'm also going to pray for you. Come, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here. Put up your hands. You spirits of darkness. Loose. You see? Loose. 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 You're free. Give the Lord a man of praise. You're free. Hey, and this lady, you know, it, hey, yes, yes, yes. There's also something in, you also have had some funny stomach aches. How long have they been? Give her a mic. Huh? Tell me. Past three days. Now, that's witchcraft. It's not just sickness. You spirit of darkness. Go! Put it down. Ancient words and truth Changing me and tell We have come. Carry them. Just put them on the sides. Get me that lady. You come, 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 come. Bring her here. Somebody has been calling her name. I see somebody has been mentioning her name next to a graveyard. Somebody shout fire! You will not die. You will not die. You will not die. You spirit of death. Leave her now. Go!
Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a man of praise. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. Carry them away. Just carry them. Do you know that young woman can't look at me? The spirit on her. Just, just tell her to turn and see whether she can look at me. She, he, he, the spirit on her can't look at me. Look at me. What, what is it saying? What is it saying? Huh? Look at me. Look at it. Look here. Look here. You see what it's doing. Look here. It can't. It can't. It can't. She's dealing with a spirit of fear. Get out, you devil! Thank you, Lord. If you have never given your life to Christ, come right now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you want to be born again today, come now. Come now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come and stand here. Come running because of time. Come running because of time. Come running. Yes, and Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient word, ancient words ever true. Come, changing me. We have come. Open heart, come, come quickly. S and word, we have come with open heart. Come quickly. Patient words long preserved for our walk in this world. There is how with God's own heart, all let the ancient words seem ancient words ever true, changing me. Yeah. We have come, oh, oh, let me yes and words, yes and words, come quickly, we have come, we have children returning back to school this coming week yeah let's pray for the children going back to school if you're a parent and you have your children just raise your hands for that hand to represent your children father we pray for our children keep them from wickedness and perversion keep them from deception keep them from disease we speak excellence in the mighty name of Jesus we pray that may you keep our children wherever they are. We speak provision for whatever they need. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those of you who are here, you're going to re uh, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Is that, hurry, hurry, come. I know your brides, but. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Bear with us. I know we are, it's, it's, but you're in the presence of God. You're not in a bar. Some of you right now, you'd be in a bar. And you don't even know the way back home, but look at you. You are in Fanero. You even shock your obese. 
<laughs> they look at you and say, what happened to you, man? All right. Repeat this as after me, those of you who have come here. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you. You have begun a great work here. And you're going to see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You're changing their lives for good. Their stories for good. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you on Sunday. Service begins. Those of you who are coming on Sunday, you come on the second service. Usually the newer people, three years and below, we usually want you in the second service because of the nature of service. So you can, second service begins from 11 to 1 p.m. First service begins 9 to 11. Usually we want the older people who are three years and above. Okay? So see you there. But come here and we write your names very quickly so that we follow you up, pray for you, tell you, help you know what it means to be born again. In Jesus' name, amen. You brain tumor, we command you out of this child. Go! In Jesus' name, amen. See you. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manifest.